to the Alameda County Recreation Booster Club Banquet. Tonight we will begin, a few of the um, participants are not here at the present time, however we're going to proceed with those that we have, we have a few substitutes, we are going with the program as listed here. Um, Reverend Mitch is not here at the present time, so we will have prayer by Ms. Macmillan, Ms. Deanna Macmillan. Are you here in prayer? Eternal God in heaven, we thank you. We praise you, Father, for our lives, our health, and our strength. God, we thank you for allowing us to come out today to witness this banquet. Father God, we ask that you will let your presence come now, Father, and that all we do, we should do to the glory of you. Father, we thank you for the team. We thank you, Father, for the parents' participation to make this a success. Realizing, Heavenly Father, that we can do nothing without you. We thank you, dear Lord, for blessing the people to allow you to use them and to participate to bring the boys and the girls out so that this banquet could be a success today. Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the glory in all that we do. We thank you, Father, for the success of this. We thank you for victory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Mr. McMillan. We will now have a greeting from Mr. Wilbur Cave, followed by the Grace, by Mayor Holmes, and at that particular time, we will be served. We will begin from the head table, <coughs> start at this end of the table, and proceed with this table, and the table over there will follow around the next table plus the table over here. And we will follow in that those directions and in an orderly fashion, an orderly manner. And hopefully we will do this in our amount of time that it won't delay the program. Mr. Cave. On behalf of the Mayor and Allendale Town Council, I bring you greetings. First of all, I would just like to commend the Booster Club for putting together this banquet to recognize the achievement of our young folk who participated in recreational programs this year. I think that uh, it is great that all of you have taken time from your busy schedules to come out to share in this recognition program. I feel real good about our recreation program, where it's come, the progress we made in the last year. Uh, more importantly, I'm excited about where we're going because I see uh, the development of a really, really fantastic program in Allendale County. Uh, I think all of us, when we look back sometime down the road, will really be pre pleased uh, and, and glad that we were participants in this program. So I ask you uh, in leaving to say that uh, we ought to always look for the positives that we do. We can always look around and see the negatives, but sometimes we look so hard at the negatives that we never ever see the positive things. So I want to commend you tonight because this is a very positive activity, and this program has made a heck of a lot of progress in the past year. When I stop to think where we were this time last year and where we are this year, a heck of a lot of progress has occurred, but it would not have happened if there weren't people in this community who are really pleased and concern about recreation. One last thing, I'd just like to say that personally I was delighted to be a part of the naming of the Morris Holmes Recreational Park this past year. I think it was only fitting recognition of someone who's given a lot of his time without uh, pay to make sure that there were activities for our young people in this community. It is that kind of giving and that kind of commitment that will make our community all that it can be. I hope each one of you will personally, when you ride by that park and see that, will be 
uh, encouraged and motivated to do all you can do. Every one of us working together can make it happen. One of my mottos is all of us or none of us. Thank you. I 
to have the opportunity to serve as a campaign manager for William Holmes in his race for mayor of Allendale. Uh, I had been involved in politics campaigns before but never had an opportunity to run one and uh, we were very successful. We had a community effort and he was elected mayor of Allendale and has since served, been re-elected three or four terms since then. Uh, back in 1989 I had the opportunity to come to Allendale to serve as your town administrator. And there's one thing that uh, has always impressed me about the mayor, uh, is that he's committed uh, to serving you as your mayor. He has gotten the experience and the knowledge. No one on the council doubts his knowledge and his know-how about the town of Allendale. He obviously has studied hard and tried to learn as much as he can about running the town of Allendale. So I've had the pleasure of working with him and I hope that we will continue to work together for a long time to come because I think we both have a vision of making some really great things happen in Allendale. I think the thing that's most important is, is that we don't see trying to be just like everybody else. What we, our vision of Allendale is to see it become a, a model for other communities, other communities. So it's going to be a lot of hard work and, and it just shows you now that he's ready to take on a role I'm sure he didn't come prepared to take but I'm sure he'll do a good job. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, I'm glad and happy to present to you your mayor, William Holmes. In the field of politics, you always uh, you should be prepared to speak at any given uh, notice. On behalf of the uh, city of Allendale, city council, and all of its citizens, I am so delighted to have this opportunity to speak uh, to you and with you tonight. We have a lot of young people in our audience and I want to address my, uh, my uh, few remarks, or comments to the young people, not only the young people that are here, but the young people in our community. On last Wednesday of this week, I had an opportunity to go to the uh, Allendale Fairfax Middle School and talk about career choices. And it was career day at the Allendale uh, Fairfax Middle School. And we had an opportunity to talk with many uh, students during uh, last Wednesday. And one of the things that I learned, uh, that I gained from the career day section that most of the students, at least the seventh and eighth grade uh, students that I talked to, pretty much have their mind made up about you know, their career choices. And I think that is indicative of the parents, uh, the school, the council involved in the, uh, in the uh, students. Getting the student to know what they would like to be when they become an adult. I 
place on the board at, during the uh, section uh, number of, of careers. I put on the board engineer, and most of the students did not know what an engineer does. Uh, I put on the uh, on the board football, professional football. Everybody in the class knew what a professional football player is. And I put a basketball in similar response. But there are many opportunities in a lot of different areas. And we must, as parents and as community leaders and as uh, school officials, um, help to make our kids aware of the many career opportunities that are out there. Let me ask the young people who are here, name me one career that you can participate in and not have to go to school. That primary school, elementary school, middle school, high school, or college. Name me one career that you can be successful at and don't have to go to school. Anyone know of any career? Anyone? When I say football, what do you need in order to become a professional football player? First of all, let me outline what you have to do. First, you have to go to primary school. You have to go through elementary school. You have to go through middle school. You have to go through high school. And what next? Can you play professional football without going to college? Anyone? Okay, young boys, young boys. If you are, if you have your goals set on being a professional football player, what do you have to do? You have to go through primary school, elementary school, middle school, high school, and college. All those schools involve training and education. Okay, now if I ask you if you want to be a career of being a nobody, do you have to go to school? How many of you have decided that you want a career of being a nobody? Anyone here decided, say, well, I'm going to make my career as being a nobody? Or being an alcoholic? Or being a drug addict? Has anyone in here decided that they want to be a nobody? It is very easy to be a nobody. To be a nobody, you do not have to work at all. You don't have to try to be a nobody and you become a nobody. Now, if you have decided that you want a career as being a nobody, what I, decide, what I suggest to you tonight, drop out of school. You don't have to go to school to become a nobody. Save your parents' money. It costs your parents a lot of money to send you through school. You go through primary school, elementary school, middle school, high school, and college, then become a nobody. That is a very expensive path to take in order to become a nobody. You can decide right now, kids, that I do not want to go to school. I want to become a nobody. I want to become a drug addict. I want to become an alcoholic. Career choices, that's what we're talking about. Are you going to decide to become a nobody? I haven't heard a response. Anyone here want to be a nobody? One of the comment that that one of the uh, students made in the uh, at the uh, career day session on last Wednesday, uh, they told me that the teacher's giving them too much hard work. I am tired of doing this work for the teacher. I am tired of doing homework for the teachers. Those are some of the comments I heard. 
are in the uh, career day session on last Wednesday. How many of you and students are doing work for the teacher? Raise your hand if you're doing a lot of work for the teacher. Raise your hand. Someone doing the work for the teachers? How many of you are doing the work because you're doing the work for your parents? You're doing the work for your parents. Okay, now, if you One of the things, students, you have to learn that when your teacher give you an assignment, that assignment is for your benefit. You are to learn the material, and you have to gain information and knowledge about that material. So in order to be successful in primary school, what do you got to do? You got to study hard. In order to be successful in elementary school, what do you got to do? You got to study hard. You got to work hard. How to be successful in middle school? You got to work hard. You got to study hard. If you study hard and work hard, you will be successful in your studies. Again, if you want to make F, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to try. You don't have to. You don't have to bring your book home. Leave your books in your locker. Why carry those heavy books around if you're not going to open them and, and study? How many of you bring book home and never open up on, on the weekend? <laughs> why are you carrying those why are you carrying those heavy books around if you're not going to use them? Students, if you're not going to leave, use your book, leave them in your, in your locker. If you decide that you're going to fail in primary, elementary, the middle school, high school, if you decided that you want to fail, why go through the charade of carrying your books around? How many of you have decided that you're not going not to be successful in your class? Has anyone here decided? How many of you decided that you want to work hard and do your best? Boy, we got some good students in here. Everyone. Okay, put your hand down. Let me ask you another question. How many of you have already decided on a, on a career? <coughs> Put your hand down. When I name a few of the uh, career choices, I want to see your hand uh, go up. Doctor. Okay, put your hand down. Lawyer. Teacher. A nurse, nurse. A professional football player. Okay, boys. In order to become a professional football player, what are you going to have to do? What is the avenue to get to become a professional football player? College. Not one professional football player today is on, not one member on a professional football te uh, team today um, that have gotten there without going through college. There's only been a few in the history of professional football. Only a few in, in terms of professional football. And in terms of professional basketball, there's only been a few that have gone out of high school and went to the professional basketball and have been successful. 
So college is the avenue. And how do you want to get to college? You got to finish high school. You can't get to college on a certificate of completion. You got to have a diploma to get to a college. And you got to have certain grade average. So what I'm saying to you tonight, young people, if you have not developed a good steady habit, start now. If you have not disciplined yourself to turn that television off or put up that Nintendo set, start now. When I got out of high school several years ago, I wasn't able to uh, uh, go directly into college and complete. I started. My uh, parents' money ran out and I went into the Air Force. And I uh, did some studying while I was in the Air Force, picked up several credits. And when I came out, I completed my uh, college education at Voorhees College. And I was employed at Savannah Riverside with DuPont back in the early 70s. Now, I could have come out of the Air Force and gone and got a job and not go to college to improve and better myself. But you have to decide what your career choice is going to be. Start now, preparing. If you're going to be a doctor, what do you need to do? Start reading about all the sciences, biology, chemistry. If you're going to be a lawyer, you need to know something about law. You need to know something about political subdivision, government. If you're going to be a teacher, if you have excellent teachers in, in your school system, model yourself after those excellent teachers. If you're going to be an engineer, you're going to have to love math. You're going to have to love physics. You're going to have to love geometry, all the ma mathematical disciplines. Don't say, I want to be a doctor and hate biology. I want to be a doctor and hate chemistry. That's a contradiction. I want to be an electrical engineer and hate mathematics. So develop those interests now. If I ask you, name me a, a rap. Uh, music star, you could readily name a rapper, right? Yeah. Name me one rap Yellow music boy. star. Yellow boy. Yellow boy. <laughs> <laughs> what about Hammer? You know Hammer? Okay. Okay, name me one jazz musician. Name me one country and western music star. Name me one chemical engineer. Name me one chemical engineer. Name me one electrical engineer. Name, name me a, a nurse. Name me a doctor. Name me a lawyer.
Can you name me a, a lawyer? The reason I give you this example, young people, listen up now, listen up. The reason I give you this example, where your love and interest are, you learn a lot about it, right? If your interest and love is in music, you learn a lot about it, right? Now, if your love and interest is in engineering, or in doctoring, or in nursing, or in teaching, you learn a lot about it, right? So we have to create those interests and those love in those other disciplines, in, so that we can learn a lot about it. When I was coming up as a kid, I knew about baseball because of my interest. But I try to learn about other things too. I learn about the music, all type of music, country and western, jazz, rock, rap. So you have to expand your, your knowledge of information. Let me ask you a question, or a history question. What continent did civilization begin? Okay, let, let me get back to the career choices. Young people, in order to become a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, you're going to have to commit yourself to those disciplines. To be a somebody, it's going to require a lot of hard work. It's going to require a lot of burning the midnight oil, studying. To be a success in life requires a lot of hard work. It doesn't come easy. And it takes many years, many, many years. I'm always striving to learn just a little more. Always striving. I'm home reading the newspaper, watching the news, listening to news on, on, on radio, different kind of program, always trying to expand your knowledge. And you're never too young to learn, and you never get too old to learn. Never too young to learn. And parents, let us get out of this notion that that it's gonna hurt our kid if we push them and encourage them to learn. I don't know where we got that that false concept from. It's not gonna hurt. This, that child brains, if you encourage that child to learn, I heard some remark, you're pushing that child too hard, that child gonna go crazy. That child will go crazy for lack of knowledge, lack of learning, and lack of discipline. We only use about 10% of our mental capacity. The brilliant people in this world only use about 10%. Look at all that reserve we have that we don't utilize and use. Encourage your child to do his or her very best. Get involved with your children. When they have activities at the school, be there. When they have activities in the community that involve your, your children or your child, be there. Support your child. And your child will not surprise you. I am what I am because of my grandmama and my mama and the people around me. I reflect my mama and my grandmama's personality. I reflect their behavior and their characteristics. I reflect my brother and sister characteristics because we grew up together, share things together. And your child whether you want to believe it or not, reflect your character, your characteristic, your trait. If you don't think so, let me video tape your child and play it back to you, and you'll see your child almost a spitting image of yourself.
the mannerism, the way the child walked, the way the child behaved and talked, reflect the people around them, the environment around them. So it's very important that you be on your best at all times around your kids. I know it's not possible at all times, but your child going to pick up your mannerism, your behavior, your characteristic. That's true. One thing I would like to conclude with, young people, that no matter what the odds are, no matter what the circumstances are, try to do your best. Seek out help. If you need information, seek out help. Get with your older brother, or older sister. They can explain certain things to you. If you need an adult to help, you know, call on responsible adult. Someone out there are committed to help you, but you have to ask for help. And by all means, always keep your head up. Look people in the eye. Stand up at all times and be a young man and young women. Be proud of who you are. You are God's chosen people. God created all of us. And in God's eyesight, you are somebody. You might not have the material thing that other people have, but in God's eyesight, you are somebody. You are very important. And God needs you to carry out his work. You cannot carry out God's work being an alcoholic or being a drug addict or being a nobody. So again, when you involve in sport, remember, teamwork good sportsmanship. Play the game fair. Play the game hard, but play the game fair. Nothing wrong with playing hard, but play it fair. So you can grow up with those attitudes and life will treat you fair. I thank you for this opportunity to speak with you and anytime young people, if you want to talk to me, I'm in the phone book call. If you want to talk to any of the city council people, or if you don't know about government, how government works, call us. If you want to come down to the town hall, uh, Mr. Cave and other people are down there, you can come to the town hall anytime. <laughs> Feel free to learn about your city government, learn about government in general. Again, we thank the sponsor, the Booster Club, all the adults involved with their children here tonight, the coaches, again, my hat's off to you. You're doing an excellent work. Sometimes you may not get the, the, the public comment from the city official, but we know you're doing a, a fine and outstanding job. So we look around here, the number of kids and parents here tonight is a testimony of your involvement, your commitment. And I close with this. Uh, Wilbur made a comment about Morris Harmon and his commitment over these past 30 odd years. Now we all can get committed. We all can do our own part. Don't look around and say, well, John Doe is not doing his part or Susie May is not doing her, her part. Look at self and say, what part am I playing? And if you answer, I'm playing an important part then that's positive. <coughs> don't look at the negative, like we always say, don't look at the negative all the time. There are a lot of positive things going on in our community. Again, I can talk forever. But I, I see some of the kids are getting, they say, man, I'm gonna stand there all night. Some of y'all are saying that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so the kids are out there, <laughs> Okay, remember, career choices. 
Remember, when I say doctor, the next time I want, to, I want you all to call me some doctor's name. When I say chemical engineer, I want you to call me. I want to be a chemical engineer. Go home. You've got a encyclopedia, a dictionary. Look up those terms. I'm not going to tell you what they do. You look up those terms. Chemical engineer, electrical engineer. You'll find out those, those are very exciting fields. Thank you, and may God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, I want to thank the, this is about the largest participant I have seen, participation I have seen in the last three or four years. And to the parents and other adults, really appreciate you coming out. A lot of you here out here tonight, and really, this is really good to see you coming out and supporting the kids and the team. Okay, we are now going to have a special dedication Tomorrow's home by Cedric Audrey. sheet of paper and I wanted the kid to sing it or use it as a rap and I didn't know what to do and I only had about two minutes when into the program and Ms. Curry said call Cedric and let Cedric do it. Cedric had never seen it before. I put it in Cedric's hand and within two minutes Cedric learned it and was singing it. So I will hope that when their uh, program is going on remember Cedric and put him in and give him that hand and give him that push. Cedric gonna make it. Thanks very much again. (laughs) 
Okay, this is really a special time comes from our program. And when we give out all these beautiful awards and everything, now don't run, leave, I want you to stay until the end of the program. <laughs> now I want the coaches to come up because uh, there are going to be some certificates and awards given and I don't know the breakdown of the teams so therefore the coaches involved in the teams they are going to have to give out the awards according to to the teams. First I'm going to give out the awards for the basketball team for last, uh, last the last season. So uh, the coach was in here, Rocky, I don't know where Rocky went to, he was one of the coaches, I don't see the other coaches in here. Yeah, will you please hold applause to the end? We're just going to call you up and you pick them up and we'll hold them. Hold applause and, until the end. Lexi Brown. No clap. Hold applause. Hold applause to the end. I know that's your buddy, but hold it. Jay Coyne. Jerry Connor. He's not here. Kenyatta Edwards. Oh, oh, Jerry. Come on up, Jerry. Tyrone Gardner. Quincy Grant. Jordan Green. James Hicks. Baron Hogg. Eddie Isham. Howard Jackson. MX Jenkins, DeMarjo Williams, Earl Williams, Lamont Williams, Michael Williams, Eric Albany, Derek Smart, Mark Young, Reggie Miller, sorry. Jermaine Williams, Leroy Priester, Anthony Simmons, Carl McTeer, Desi Rollins, Louis Albany, Carlos Hayward, and Christopher Robinson. Football. Correction <coughs> Department, the Rev. Allen and Recreation Booster Club. I'm Thomas Cohen, coach, head coach of the Allen and Small Fry. My assistant coach, Mr. Sean Schuler, and Mr. Timothy Meyer. We had one of those seasons you call a uh, almost season. We almost won every game, but we lost the ball. So. <laughs> and we try to try all your men. And now, Mr. Shula will introduce our players to you. Zachary Cohen. Theodore Irving. <laughs> Antonio Frazier. Richard Jr. Cedric Ritter. Neiman Yeomans. Neiman Yeomans. 
Frederick McKnight, Antonio DeVoe, Kobe Jones, Audrey Chisholm, Brian Johnson. Rudy. Rudy Chu. Derek Allen. Stanford Lee Robinson. Jonathan McMillan. Justin Shulo. Robert Lee Jr. Charles Gill. Demetrius Chisholm. Gary Woods. Maurice Hoover, Brandon Franklin, Deshaun Rodell, Michael Williams, Offensive player for the year is Corey Singleton. And finally, for the coaches player of the year, Jakevi McKnight. Thank you. In the absence of the coaches or the Pee Wees, Mr. Holmes and I will give out the certificates. These are some hard playing boys, so I have to really uh, give apologies because I really don't know who did what. But <laughs> and if Mr. Holmes or Mr. Smith would care to, you know, give me a little hand and given some titles, that's fine, it's much appreciated. But the first person I have a certificate for is Edward Washington. Would you please come forth to be here? Okay. Charlie Gillison. Richard Broomfield, Jr. Brooke Scott, third. Tyrone Harvey. Tyrone Harvey.
Harvey. Ben Bradley. Kareem Preacher. Alex Ritter. Jason Daniel. Timothy Eaton. Now remember, if someone's here that wish to receive it for these people, please come forth. And which, come on. Anderson Walker. Anderson Walker. Derek Ginn. Derek Ginn. Quincy Humans. I knew that one. <laughs> Tammy May Third. Mandrell Robinson. Jonathan Odom. Rodney Bradley. <laughs> Jacob White. Kevin Holmes. Marcus Macmillan. <laughs> Brian Johnson. Ernest Ellis. Dion Roberts. Clarence Husenda. Jewel Jenkins. Terrence Marshall. Come on. Douglas Gill, Rock, okay. Okay. Douglas. <laughs> Rodney Allen, Damon Loach, Jermaine Outing. Howard Field. Our parents, your young men, have really worked hard. Believe me, I know. Because I've been to just about all of their little games. I even tried to coach them, but the coaches wouldn't let me. But, I, <laughs> but they've, been real, they've been real hard working, so let's give them a hand, please. Players to make a line right here on this side of the table.
Okay, I'd like to start by uh, recognizing the members of the uh, 91 Henry Aaron All-Star team. Here. All the members of the team. <laughs> Okay, there were, uh, Mario, did you hear? Yeah. Okay, there were 14 young men that played on this team. And uh, we had a tournament in Allendale in July. And for those of you who didn't uh, or weren't around to see it, this team uh, competed in the District 3 tournament. That's a district that consists of uh, 16 teams from uh, Williston to Orangeburg, all the way back to uh, Somerville. This group of young men for the second year in a row finished second in that district. Uh, we were all a little disappointed that we didn't win the tournament. But uh, considering the competition and considering the level of competition, I think that uh, Elder County should be proud of this group of people. Uh, yeah, I'm going to call out the names and Coach Cave is going to give you awards. <coughs> okay, starting with uh, Leroy Priester. David Owens. And if there's anyone here from Walter Flowers family. Everybody's in. Roger Bradley. Mike Edwards, is that here? Michael Edwards. Okay. Q Ty Kelly. <laughs> Marvin Jenkins. Carlos Hayward. Right here. Mario Washington. Christopher Haynes, Sean Roberts, Curtis Seabrooks, Donald Lewis, and Reggie Miller. Okay, there were about four other teams in the league, so Coach Cave is going to call out the names. And please, uh, if they're not here, if there's someone in their family or friends, we pick them up from. We have about <laughs> about 90 names here, so we're gonna go through as quickly as we can. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do as he said. We're gonna be brief. Larry Sims, Winford Ferris, Byron Deer, Joseph Dobson. Jay Isham, Kenneth Harney, Joe Joyner, Troy Bostic, <coughs> Aljamain Bradley, Howard Field, Raymond Connor. Mia Farris, Kevin Lee, uh, Clarence Husendove, DiMaggio Williams, uh, Tiffany, Tiffany Sims, Larry Sab, Brian Sab, Brian Rivers, Daryl Brown,
Rashawn Kelly, Tony Dobson, Keto Gary, Jerry Connors, <coughs> Jermaine Miller, uh, Derek Homer, Lexi Brown, Marvin Smart, Kendra Shaw Williams, Anthony Simmons, uh, Mark Young, Quincy Robinson, okay, Carl McTeer, Hiram Brown, Johnny Mitchell, Jackie Sims, Marvin Singleton, Keith Singleton, Edward Washington, Ted Ellis, Brooker Bonds, Franklin Dunbar, Darrell Gray, Donika Gray, uh, Wilson Williams, Rodriguez Williams, B, uh, Beatrum Saxon, Medicus Humans, Cadell White, Timothy Eaton, Alex uh, Ritter, Quan Simmons, Ben Bradley. Brooke Scott Jr., Lamont Atkins, Travis Gillison, DiMaggio Williams, Felicia Hay Farris, Felicia Farris, Hammy Mays. Alvester Connors, <laughs> William Robinson Jr., <laughs> Julius K. Travis Priester, <coughs> Eric Payne, that concludes the team's um, awards for the night. Give everyone a hand. Now we have we have the cheerleaders that we're gonna have to uh, just miss the ticket time. Cheerleaders coming up. I would like to um, thank all the parents that participated this year in supporting the cheerleaders and the football players for the 1991 season. 
Um, you have shown great interest in your sons and daughters' activities. I've seen a lot of that this year, more than I have in the past years. Uh, more parents are participating, and that is very good. Um, although our losses have outweighed our winnings for the season, your added support made it an equal balance. By supporting our children today, you put a spirit in their hearts that will manifest in their future as a spirit of confidence, of endurance, and belief. They will believe in themselves, be confident in their choices, and will endure through all the obstacles they may face. We thank you for our helping our children this year. And now I'm about to pass out the certificates for the 1991 cheerleading football season. As I call your name, would you come forward? Danielle Shulo. <laughs> Shana Charlton. Sasha Cohen. <laughs> Jasmine Owen. Cole Badger. <laughs> Katari Johnson. Nadine Dunbar, <laughs> Tamika Hill, Takia Huzendup, Shayna Jr., Paige Young. Fayquetta Orr, Glenda Orr, Renata Cohen, Maisha Miley, Tia White, Christian Mitchell, Sahaji Gray, Shaniqua Gregory, Tisha Ingram. Thank you girls for participating this year. Thank y'all very much. One more presentation and that'll conclude the presentation for tonight. There's a special pre presentation by a special award by Diane Holmes. I would like to say good evening. And we would like to, on the behalf of the Booster Club, we would like to thank everybody for coming. And I would like to present this special award Y'all bear with me because I know everybody tired. Um, this award goes to a special person that has been involved in the town recreational program for the last 40 years. 
he has put in long, hard hours on and off the field. And we consider this a milestone. Amen. So we'll miss this will Mr. Morris Holmes please stand. We present this award with love for your dedication and your service. This is in appreciation to Morris Holmes for your dedication and service rendered for the past 40 years. Alan L. Kearney Recreation Booster Club, December 7, 1991. for the night awards of awards. Now we have the final remarks by the Alia County Park and Recreational Department, Mr. Bob Smith, the director. Okay, good afternoon. Um, I want to commend the Booster Club for a job well done. For this annual Awards banquet. Um, you know, I, I'm at the position on this program where you know I know all you guys got your trophies and your certificates, and it's time to go. When I was an athlete, you know, this was the guy that I used to hate because I said, this time, man, hey, one of this guy cut the conversation so we can leave. You've had enough fun, enough things to eat. So now, all I want to do is congratulate the young participants, girls and boys, for the awards that you received. A uh, few things that I do want to announce, we have basketball getting ready to come up. And sun Saturday will be the 14th of December. And we're going to open up the Allendale Elementary School gym at 11 o'clock and um, the gym down in Fairfax. i got to get with Ms. Robinson on that also. And we're going to have our registration. We've registered some of the kids already. But we're going to have our registration, so please bring your registration forms, your fees, bring tennis shoes, and I have the balls, and we can have some fun days because we're going to have coaches there trying to pick and get the teams together. <clears throat> On another note, um, the first Saturday in February, Benedict College is having their homecoming game against Edward Waters out of Jacksonville, Florida. And that morning they're going to have a basketball camp for boys and girls from the ages of 7 to 16. And I told the athletic director that I would see what I could do about the kids from this area coming down for that event that Saturday. And um, the only thing you need is a $5 Fee. Once you get there, you get a t-shirt because Alex English will be there to sign autographs and help in the camp. Um, Ex-ball player from the Denver Nuggets and Carolina Gamecock. 
you get a t-shirt with the count's name on it. You get a lunch. And you get a chance to see Benedict College and uh, Edward Waters team play at 4 o'clock. And we'll probably be leaving about 8 o'clock that morning on, on both the buses from up at the uh, recreation office of the 402 M Memorial Avenue. Okay. Um, and like I said, um, I, all I want to do is congratulate the young men for coming out to get the awards to the young ladies. And I want to also thank the parents for being behind these children. Because you know, if, if they weren't out there doing something constructive, playing ball or something like that, they could be doing something wrong. Shooting in somebody's house, breaking in somebody's car. So you, you know, we need to give yourselves a pat on the back too, for a lot of you parents for having these kids here. And like I'm saying, each year I'm hoping that things get better. I saw some of the young boys felt as if they didn't get certain trophies, and I know all the boys love to get trophies, because I love to get trophies myself. But um, things will get better, but you know, I can't see things getting, you know, this is, this is the top. At the end of the year, you have an annual banquet where you get certificates and trophies. Everybody can't get trophies, but we did try to give everybody participation awards, which was the certificates. Okay, and I hope that um, we can get a lot of participation for this trip to Columbia the first Saturday in February for Benedict College Homecoming. And that would be a pretty decent camp for some of the kids that have never gone to a basketball camp. And remember, I'm saying Alex English would be there, ex-professional basketball player. And um, it would just be something where if some of the parents would like to go, because I would need some for chaperones on those two buses, but if some of the parents would like to go, I would like for you to contact me anytime at the recreation office, um, or either call me 584-7041. Thank you. Mill McMillan, come up and do the benediction. Please be quiet. Can we please give reverence to God as we do the benediction? Eternal God in heaven, it is now the end of the 1991 banquet. God, we thank you for the parents. We thank you for the children. We thank you for the coaches, the directors, everyone that was involved, Father, to make this year a success. Father God, we give you the praise, we give you the honor, and we give you the glory. God, as we leave this place tonight, we thank you for allowing your spirit and your love to rest, rude, and abide with us now and forever. May we all say, Amen. Amen.